Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word, your power, and your anointing. Thank you for your kindness, your love, and your grace. Thank you, Jesus. That's the truth. Somebody said you're preaching. Somebody said you're preaching from, 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 from knowledge, honey. You're wrong about that. I ain't been nowhere. Keep telling people, I didn't even finish high school. Went to Corn Cobb College down in Cow Pasture Hollow, where I got the degree called Neology. And I've been back getting a refresher course since I've been here. And I got news for you, honey. That degree still works. Out there in the woods, in the shed, here, in my room, it still works. Neology. You get it by bending the knees and lubricating you with tears. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Yes, sir, honey. I'm going back for my bachelor's degree. I'm going back for my Ph.D. <laughs> oh, and then I'm going to go back and get a little bit more H.D. That's called Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen. Ah, glory to the God of heaven. The king of glory. The pearl of grace. I don't care. I'm going to preach and get happy here tonight anyway. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told Teresa. Teresa and I have been coming out here along with Mother Hightower praying every night early. I said, look, you got some other folk out there to help you pray tonight. You let me stay in here and, 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 and touch the boss man before I come out there. Amen. And she said, okay, honey. And I she come. Amen. You see what happens when you when you give the man a chance to get off by himself and you all do a little praying before he gets here? You see what happens, huh? Uh, somebody said, you ain't doing a good job. Maybe not, but there's something inside of me that's turning like a wheel inside of a wheel. Amen. Ah, oh, yeah. Hallelujah. I love him tonight. Glory be to God. Everybody say praise the Lord. I'll tell you people, when you go home tonight, get your Bibles and get out the 139th Psalm and read it. What a psalm. I tell you, I didn't know it was like this. It's one of those times again when God just went <sharp inhale> and turned it on. Oh, Lord, you have examined my heart and you know everything about me. You know where I sit or stand. When far away, you know my every thought. You chart the path ahead of me and tell me where to stop and rest. Every moment you know where I am. You know what I'm going to say before I even say it. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. He said, you know both to both proceed and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. This is too glorious, too wonderful to believe. I can never be lost to your spirit. I can never get away from my God. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the place of the dead, you are there. If I ride the morning winds to the farthest ocean, even there your hand will guide me. Hallelujah. Your strength will support me. If I try to hide in the darkness, the night becomes light around me. For even darkness cannot hide from God. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and... Listen... Oh, Lord, have mercy. Darkness and light are both a light to you. Isn't that wonderful? You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and then you knit them together in my mother's womb thank you for making me so wonderfully complex it is an amazing thing to think about <laughs> oh hallelujah glory to the god of heaven praise the name of our god blessed be the king of glory hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. I'm going to read that again. I'm going to read that again. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body. You knit them together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. It is an amazing thing to think about. Your workmanship is marvelous. And how well I know it. Do you know it tonight? Do you know it tonight? The heart beats thousands of times a day. The lung breathes thousands of times a day. Gallons of blood is pumped through your body every single day. 
Oh, hallelujah. The eye is faster than the lens of a camera. Come on, the ear is sharper than the sharpest microphone. Oh, hallelujah. The strength of a man's hand can outdo almost anything that the world has to offer. The marvelous workings of God. You were there when I was being formed in utter seclusion. You saw me. I like this now. I want you everybody listen and say I. You saw me before I was born. And you scheduled each day of my life. <laughs> when I read that, I said, Lord God Almighty. Did you, did you all hear that? Did you hear that? You saw me the day I was formed. And you scheduled every day of my life. <laughs> No other than black folks say he woke me up this morning. <laughs> Started me on my way. The Lord is blessing me right now. He brought me from a mighty long way. David said he picked me up out of a horrible pit. Set my feet on a solid rock. And what did he do? He established my God. Well, I'm going to tell you all something. If this preaching don't do you any good, I recommend you stay home. If I, because this is the best I can do. I'm telling you right now. When I get talking about how great is our God, how great is His name, He's the greatest one. He's forever the same. He'll roll back the waters of the mighty Red Sea. He said, I'll never leave you. Put your faith in me. What I got to do around here? Praise the Lord, chairs, shout trees, sing you branches, glorify God you hills, praise Him you valleys, hallelujah, 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 glory to God. Woo! My, 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 you saw me before I was born, you saw me before I was born. You saw me before I was born and scheduled each day of my life. Boy, I tell you, I have to stop there, folks. I, just, I thought that maybe I, I had got off schedule. <laughs> I thought maybe I had lost the timetable. I thought, I thought maybe the bus had come and I'd missed it. I thought the train had come, but you see, God said, I did the scheduling, boy. And I do things on time. I do them on time. The bus will ride right on time. The plane will be there right on time. I'll roll back the water right on time. I'll move the mountain on time. I've got it scheduled. He said, in case you don't like my schedule, look at that sun, how it stays right on time. If that don't impress you, look at them stars, how they stay right there where I put them a million years ago, still sparkling bright and clear. Hallelujah. Ah. He said, if you think I don't know what I'm doing, check out your heart and watch how it just goes sa -thump, sa -thump, sa -thump, sa -thump, sa -thump, right on time. Oh, hallelujah. Raise your hand and say, yeah. Go ahead, be the guy. He's on time, honey. He's on time. This tent meeting here is on time. Somebody said, we just had a great one, honey. It left on time and we're here on time. Amen. We're on time, folk. Somebody said, why didn't God send somebody else? He knew who to send. He knows who to send. He knows who to bring around. Amen. Somebody said, he said, Brother Whittington, he sure did. He moved them on. Huh? And he don't mean for you to go where he's at either. I can tell you that much. Uh-uh. You don't follow preachers, honey. You learn to follow God. Preachers are going to stop. They're going to fade. They're going to fail. They're going to sin. They're going to fall short. Jesus is the Alpha and Omega. Thank God for Brother Jim. I'm glad he's gone. Why? Somebody said, you act like that. No, he moved on time. Come on, people. Learn to move on time. My time comes, I'm going to be gone. I told these folks today, I said, now, y'all better get used to me just... Uh, when the time comes, you know, and the tribulation might hit us here, and you can't buy or sell, and you can't ride a plane, you can't... Somebody said, we ain't going to be here. I ain't taking no chance, honey. 
I'm getting enough of God in case I am going to be here. Hey, I happen to believe we're going to be here. See? Then I say, well, I'm going to get caught away first. That's fine. God bless you. Just wait for me. I'm on my way. Amen. Hallelujah. If you get caught away before I do that, then just wait on me, honey, because I'm going to be coming right on behind you. Amen. The dead in Christ is going to rise first, but you're only going to rise that high until I start rising with you. Amen. Come on, folks. Better get that through your head. Somebody say, well, I'm going to be in the grave, and I'm going to rise first. That's right. Out of the grave. But when you get on top of that grave, honey, everybody on the earth who loves God is going to rise to meet him together. God is going to get this thing together. Now, you understand? He's going to get it together. You think you go, you know the old song said, if you get there before I do, just look out for me. I'm coming to <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. God does things on time. Does it on time. We're going to have a tent revival here. We're going to have a Holy Ghost campground here. It's not going to be a fly-by-night place. No, it is not. It ain't going to be that way. We're going to feed people, clothe them. We're going to do everything. We're going to give away everything we have. We're going to step out on the water. God's going to help us do it. Come on, people. They're going to come from all over the north. And I'm, they're already calling me. They're going, to, they're going to find out I'm here. And I had the first preacher doing this. There's preachers all over this country being led of God to buy land. All over this country being led of God to get away from the cities. God's got thousands of Christians in the city that are going to have to move, folk. They're going to have to move. They're going to have to move. Somebody said, they're going to come here. Yeah, they're going to come, come here. Mm. And you're just liable to hear, they don't mind playing that music at 3 o'clock in the morning. We ain't going to mind praying at 4 o'clock in the morning. We ain't going to go over there and tell them to shut up. We're just going to pray louder so we don't hear them. Huh? Come on, folks. We ain't going to fight them. We ain't going to fight nobody. Amen. And if they fight us, we ain't going to fight them. We ain't going to fight them. God didn't send us here to fight. I've already been over talking about it. I said, man, we didn't come to cause you no trouble. Amen. I didn't come here to cause no race problem, no social problem. I didn't come here to cause no trouble. Amen. We ain't going to run from it if it comes, but we ain't going to cause none. Amen. We're just going to stand right on the rock, Christ Jesus, and put up our sword and our shield and say, love on, Satan. Let us go. Hallelujah. God is God. God got everything on schedule, folks. I don't know if you people understand what I just got finished reading. I, that's, I'm telling you the truth. You may not believe it, but I'm reading the whole the whole chapter because of that one statement. That's the one thing that stopped me. I was reading the thing and I liked it all. But when I read that, I said, that's the one I got to use. That's the one I got to use. You knew me before I was born and scheduled each day of my life before I began to breathe. This is the next statement. Every day was recorded in your book. Have you ever, have you ever paid a bill, and you went to, and they sent you done and said it wasn't paid, and you go there and they get out the book. Have you ever done that? And you see them looking through the book, and finally they find the record of where you paid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now if they ain't got the record, honey. You're in trouble. You better have your own record then. Come on, you better have your own receipt. Oh, huh? <laughs> well, God recorded your days in His book. And honey, he got a good recording angel. Yeah, he knows the day and the hour and the precept and the problem and the heartache and the pain. He knows. <laughs> for 400 years, the children of Israel cried out to God for deliverance. 400 years, they prayed, God, get us out of this land of Egypt. One day, God stopped old Moses on the backside and said, Moses, go down, Moses. Go down to Egypt land. Why? Why, God? He said, because I have seen the tears of my people. I have heard their cry, and I know their suffering. I know all about it. And I want you to go down there and tell them that because I know, and because I see, and because I hear, I'm coming on down to do something about it. I'm going to get them out of that mess. Amen. And honey, the world today is in Egypt. The church is in Egypt. And day and night, saints are crying, How long, Lord? How long? How much longer do we got to put up with this hell and this sin and the misery? And God's saying to somebody, Go down and tell them I see your tears. I hear your cry. I know what you're going through. Hold on, because I'm coming back just like I said. Hallelujah. To receive you unto myself. Lord, I tell you the truth, Lord. I, I just got to leave that in your hand. That don't do them no good, Lord. I just leave, take, let them take it home. Maybe, maybe it's midnight. Maybe about 3 o'clock in the morning somebody's shouting in their house. I don't know. 
I remember some time ago I was with a preacher up in New York and about two o'clock in the morning I heard him jump out of bed and boy, whoa, hallelujah, pray. I said, brother, what in heaven's name wrong with you? Two o'clock in the morning you shouting like that all over this hotel room. He said, brother, the devil just told me I wasn't saved and I wanted to show him I was. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I said, okay, brother, you convinced the devil and me that I get back in bed. Amen. He got back in bed and turned out the light and we about ready to go to sleep again. All of a sudden, I heard a toe tapping on the floor and somebody just talking in tongues and praising God and I jumped. I said, man, what's wrong with you now? Oh, I said, the devil just come and told me I wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost and I just wanted to show him I was. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So maybe tonight about two o'clock in the morning, somebody might hear you just do a little Holy Ghost dance. Say, Lord, I just got to about what that preacher said, and I just had a shout a little bit. Hallelujah! Rejoice, the Bible says, on your name is written down in the land book. Of, it's recorded. It's recorded. It's recorded. Hey, folk, please do yourself a favor. Don't miss out on the message because you don't like me. Because you don't like my style or like my mannerism. Or maybe what you heard about me. Don't miss out on this truth. Rejoice in the truth. Some folks say it would have been all right if it wouldn't have been him preaching it. Honey, it's all right no matter who preaching it. Hallelujah. The truth makes you free. The truth makes you free. Not the preacher. Not the church. The truth. Brother, a big old jackass meets you out there and tells you to repent. You better do it. Repentance is of God. Anytime somebody tells you to repent, honey, do it. Because that's God's message. The devil don't preach repent, folk. Get that? The devil don't preach repent. The devil doesn't preach repent. The devil doesn't preach repent. That's the word of God. So whenever you hear somebody say repent, just say, thank you. I'll sure do it. Want to help me? What I got? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Boy, I love you people. I really do. I'll be finished in just a moment. How precious it is, Lord. How precious it is, Lord, to realize that you are thinking about me constantly. <laughs> you know, I feel sorry for some of you people. You haven't committed enough sin yet. Some of you folks, why don't you go out here and commit some low-down sins? It'll do you some good. Maybe you'll get sorry enough to come back and say, God, have mercy, and then you'll be grateful when God picks you up and forgives you. Go on ahead and get some drunk and commit adultery and raise hell, honey, and find out what sin's like so you know how to come to God and get forgiveness. Because someone forgot where God dug us out of. Brother, when you hear God still saying, I'm thinking about you constantly. God about me, the way I've done, the things I've said, the life that I lived, and you still think about me? I thought you'd wipe me off. That's what my friends do. That's the way my kinfolk do. I thought, God, you'd wipe me out. He said, a mother might forget. But I'll never forget. I'll never leave you. Hey, why don't some of you folks do yourself a favor and go out here and commit some sins? In case you don't know what I'm talking about, sinners like the little woman who wiped his feet with her tears and cried over to Jesus that forgave her for her sins. He said, wherever this gospel is preached, it's going to be talking she wasn't sorry for her sins. She wasn't crying because she was sorry for her sins. The Bible said she was grateful. She was grateful. She was there because she was grateful because he had forgiven her of her sins. She wasn't down there weeping and crying about her sins. She was grateful. You say something looking right at you and I can tell you ain't grateful. Somebody said, Who? I'm telling you, you're not grateful. Some of you better go home and get on your face and remember where God brought you from and get grateful. Now you get mad at me if you want to, but you better start getting grateful. You better start getting humble. You ain't no big deal. And I'm going to tell you, don't pick on me because we'll start praying all night here. I'll tell you, we'll do it. Boy, when I think of what God put up with me, how He loves me, and He says, I think of you constantly. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Oh, hallelujah. 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 He said, I can't even count how many times a day your thoughts torn towards me. Why? He's thinking about us. We think about him once or twice in a day or every now and then. But God's always thinking, there goes, there goes, there. 
And it goes, oh, there you are, oh, Lord. Hey, that don't, that's out of schedule, stay. Wait a minute. Hold it easy down. There you go. Oh, wait a minute. You're getting too fast now. Slow down. Here. Oh, out of, don't get off schedule, stay now. Huh? But wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, there he goes. He's going astray again. I got to call something to get him back. Oh, oh, Lord. What was that, Lord? Oh, God. What happened? Well, stay on time, boy. Stay on schedule. Too fast. Don't walk too slow. Just walk with me and we'll get there all right. <laughs> mm. Sometimes he allowed me to get tripped up and I almost fall. He can't be see. Whoop, I caught you, boy. You almost fell. You got, you got ahead of schedule, see? Lord, I thought he put my front behind and my back front. <laughs> oh, boy, he saw has stopped me sometime. Oh, boom. Hey, God, move this mountain. He says, not on schedule. <laughs> Oh, I know what these preachers do. You can say that about beat I removed. I've learned a long time ago that's the truth. But faith is a gift of God, and God ain't going to give you faith to say to the mountain to be removed until it's time for the mountain to be removed. You can holler all day long, move mountain, move mountain, but if God ain't gave you the faith to say it, honey, you can hollering. And every one of you know that too, don't you? Yes, sir. You prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. Why don't God? It ain't on schedule. I'm glad I come in here and put my tape recorder on tonight. Are you still running tape recorder? You're going to be some good radio material there. That'll probably get me off another station or two. I can't even count how many times a day your thoughts turn towards me. And when I awaken in the morning, you are still thinking of me. Surely you will slay the wicked, Lord. Away, bloodshed, men, be gone. They blaspheme your name and they stand in arrogance against you. How silly can they be, O oh, Lord? Shouldn't I hate those who hate you? Shouldn't I be grieved with them? Yes, I hate them, for your enemies are my enemies too. Search me, O oh God. Know my heart. Test my thoughts. Point out anything you find in me that makes you sad. And lead me along the path of everlasting life. You notice what he did there? He said, shouldn't I hate those that hate you? Shouldn't I be enemies with those that... And then right away he knew that that was in God's ways. Right away he knew that was wrong and he said, oh God, search me. Because God don't hate nobody. Don't let nobody fool you. God doesn't hate. God is love. And in him there is no hate at all. God is light, and in Him there is no darkness at all. God don't have no enemies, honey. How in the world can God have enemies? <laughs> huh? The devil tries to be an enemy of God, but he ain't, he ain't nothing. He ain't nothing at all. God can just... In fact, He said, come on, I'll just prepare your table, right? In the presence of... I used to worry about my enemies all the time. I used to worry about every way you go. Enemy, somebody's always fighting, somebody's always fighting and one day God said, Son, I'm going to prepare your table and the present your enemy. I said, How come I ain't, I ain't got such a big table? He said, You ain't got too many enemies. I mean, you only got one enemy, you got a little table. You got two, you got a little big. You got a whole lot of enemies. Get a long table. It was getting pretty long now. In fact, I had to buy a new tablecloth for the ex extension I had to put on it. About to your enemies, 100 feed them, so I got to get a few extra chickens now. But thank God, I'm hoping that if I feed them and set them down to the table, maybe. Oh, it's so good to see somebody else. And it's so good to be around other people. That it, That's why don't don't start digging in everybody's past or what they believe. Don't do that. If they got like precious faith, stick with it. If they got the Spirit of Christ, hang to it. Come on. Amen. We'll all come together. He'll sanctify us. He'll do it, brothers and sisters. He'll do it. I said he'll do it. He got a way of doing it, and he'll do it. But you see, if you allow the devil to separate you and allow him to move you away, then it, somebody said, well, I, I ain't going to go that technique because I don't like to preach. Hey, pray for me. If I can't do you no good, come and do me some good. If you got more of God than I got, praise the Lord. Show me how to move on, huh? Come on. Lord, if you're on a higher limb than I am, reach down and help me get up there too. If I'm up a little higher, I'm going to reach down for you. Oh, help us, Lord. How I've needed these Christians. You know this lady here? This lady here, I carried her for years. I fussed at her and hollered at her and screamed at her and prayed with her and got so mad sometimes I want to cuss her out. Now she carries me. 
I helped her keep the faith, and now the faith that she kept is many a time when I'm in trouble, I'll pick up the phone and call her. And Mother High Tire, she does go back to St. Louis. I won't get her phone number. Yeah, we're going to call her about 3 o'clock in the morning. She'll be sitting out there on a stool making biscuits. I say, <laughs> get off that stool and get on your knees and make some Holy Ghost biscuits for this old preacher down here in South Carolina. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Every one of you Christians, ought to, before you leave here tonight, ought to go to everybody else and get the telephone number. Come, yeah, come on. Ought to find out where they live and say, can I call you? Can I come for prayer if I need her? Come on, saints. That's right. You ought to do it. Any one of these nights, you can be out here all by yourself. I know that sister said when, the, when she went, she went to a friend's house. The friend wasn't there, but the friend's house was there. You wouldn't just go to anybody's house, would you? Went to a friend. And the friend finally came home at 11 o'clock, and she said, I'll come spend the night. Now, if that wouldn't have been a friend, you wouldn't have got in there. Well, I'm glad you did. Come on in. 11 o'clock at night. What do you expect? Come on in, huh? Friend. Boy, us Christians, we'd, we just ain't enough to be friends. That's good, Sarah. You did it. You did it. Lord God, bless my soul. Lord, I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for the truth tonight, Lord. I, oh, God, I ain't doing that to be smart, Lord. I thank you for the truth. I need this, Lord. you gotta, you got to help me to know I need it, Lord. God, i got to know every day that my life is in your hand. got to know every day, Lord, that I'm walking before you. I can't please people no more. I tried it for 20-some years. I've tried to please the Baptist and the Methodist and the Holiness and the Oneness and the Trinity. God, i tried and I can't do it, Lord. I can't even please myself sometimes. Oh, God, help me to have faith to please you. Help me to do the things that please you, to humble myself, to walk in holiness and righteousness all the days of my life. Thank you for taking my yesterdays. Thank you, God, for using them to bring me this far. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister, I'd, I'd like to pray for you. I'll tell you the truth, I really would. But I really believe you ought to believe what I said to you, little one. Well, anybody who's ever here. What's wrong with your daughter? Which one's this? Come here, honey. Which one? Come here, sweetheart. Come here to me. Why, who, who said she had brain damage? Doctor? Huh? Jesus loves you, baby. You look normal to me. I rip you, man, this demon spirit of epilepsy. This foul force of hell that captivates and comes against this child's mind and causes her to have seizures and uncontrollable spells. I command you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this child's hand is in God's hand. In his mother's womb, God knew it. And he's scheduling it every day. Lord, I believe this is the schedule for her healing. I believe you said, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. I speak the word of recreation, Lord. I command her brain to be healed. Every cell to be restored. Every demon oppression to be gone. Jesus Christ our Lord. Never another seizure. No more seizures, Lord. I call it done. In Christ's name. Amen. Go to those two ladies right there. Go to those two ladies. Put your arm right around their neck. Those two ladies. Sister Williams and Mother Hyde. Arm right around them. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be free from your seizures. By the anointing of God that flows through the body of Christ, be thou made whole. In the name of Jesus Christ, we be restored to health and perfection by the healing power of our God. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. Call it done, Lord. Go to Mother High Town. Now, that's right. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, child of God, be thou restored to health and healing. By the power of the living Christ, be thou made whole. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. One more, honey. One more. Mother Alberta over there. Let's go to Mother Alberta. These are the old mothers. Amen. It wouldn't hurt you to whisper your name in their ear, because they'll call your name in prayer. It wouldn't hurt you to tell them your name. They'll call your name in prayer. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't he wonderful? Lift up your hand and say, I believe. I believe. Hallelujah. He is Lord. Go to Mother Kirkland, too. I don't want to miss Mother Kirkland over there. She's got a bunch of kids. She prays for them all the time. She Just put your arm around old Mother Kirkland right there. Amen. God bless these dear old saints. They'll pray for you every day. We're going to hold on. God, Mother, now, don't stay away, honey. You don't live too far away. You live over there in Smokes, I understand. Is that right? That ain't far. I know where that's at. That's about 20 miles, isn't it? You can come on back. Bring your child. It's like you did well tonight. A mother who takes her children to church is in God's will. And God will make her normal. You bring her back. Okay? God love you. And who's the healer? 
No, no, no. Who's the healer? Get it right. Thou shalt call his name. Yeah, God don't heal nobody without Jesus. He's the way to God. Come on, folks. Got to hang in there with that. They're trying to do everything they can to do away with it, but he's the way to God. Yes, he is. Amen. They try to change his name to Allah and Yashu and Yezu and all other stuff, but I'm going to stick with that old-fashioned one called Jesus. He brought me where I came from. Come on, people. When I was in sin, I said, Jesus. He said, I'm right here. Amen. When I was in trouble, I said, Jesus. He said, yes, sir, I'm right here. Uh, you ever hear that song, that old Western song about the little boy named Jim? Little Jimmy, you know, he used to go to church every day and pray. He'd get down on his knees and say, Lord, this is Jimmy. Lord, this is Jimmy. Lord, this is Jimmy. Every day he'd go to church and get on his knees and say, Lord, this is Jimmy. One day he walked into the church and he was having a business meeting, a church meeting. He got down to the altar and got on his knees and he said, Lord, this is Jimmy. Lord, we're having a business meeting. You're disturbing us. Now you get on out here. Run over by this truck and they rushed him to the hospital and the boy laying in unconscious bedside and he said I stood there trying to be saying Jimmy this is Jesus <laughs> come to get you son <laughs> Jesus oh hallelujah <laughs> call your name oh, Lord this is Ralph <laughs> Lord this is Chris I <laughs> Lord this is Brenda <laughs> amen Lord this is Teresa <laughs> amen hey will you children do that when you get home tonight get on your bed and tell Lord this is me Lord call your name <laughs> some of you old folk Go on ahead and commit a sin or two so you know how to do it. And, you know, that's the way Elijah was on the mountaintop. He said, you got to go to call on your God. Hmm? You know, I often used to say this. Some people who are so quick not to forgive sins of others, you need to know the anguish of heart. Then you need to go to God and find how, how easily he takes be grateful. And I don't think anybody has done that the first time they came to Christ. I have met Christians by the thousands, and the Christians that I have talked to that's moved into, into close relation with God were saved for years and lived lives of the flesh and the world and had to go back and repent and repent and cry and pray and ask God to forgive them for things they'd done. And as they kept being honest with God, He moved them into another realm. I remember Sister Williams and I used to hear her sometimes in the middle of the night crying, saying, My God, I'm worse than a dog. I don't, my, my, my flesh is so filthy. My soul, God, kill me, God. She don't pray like that now no more. She'll say, Thank you, Jesus. And she, let me tell you something. You, that woman, praising God, the top of her voice. You see, Christians, most of us, we haven't really got answers and blessed with healing. And when she was going through this trouble, her little grandbaby was killed by a cop little boy that big wow, kill him got off scot three-year-old boy police from new york hit that boy hit him alongside the head and killed that beautiful little child her daughter went to pieces and she had to bear all of that in spite of her own affliction her own hurting her own she bore up under it we just can't picture what the price has to be paid but if you pay it if you pay it that's what they're telling me these, both these ladies know I haven't paid it completely yet. That's what they do know I'm finding out what it costs. It's reaching down deep to get the cost, and I'm paying it. So I said, I would never talk like that. I, you're a preacher. You should be talking like that. Yeah, well, I ain't going to about where you are with God. Well, I know where I've been, and I know it ain't where I'm going to be. And I'm not going to get to no place. Paul, the greatest man ever listed, I don't live as though I've already attained. I'm not going to tell you I got it. Because I got tomorrow to live and there might be something else I haven't got yet. So I'm going to check that one out. See, my days are scheduled. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. I'm on time here. This, this buying of this property was no hit and miss. We've looked years and God kept saying South Carolina. And this was... I bought this piece of property and took a $30,000 mortgage. And the man never met me and never checked me. You ever try to borrow anything? What do they do? They take all kind of references. They check you out. Tell me, try to buy a car. Go ahead. They never even checked me one time. I told the man, I'll give you so much money down. He said, you got it. Talk to his real estate man, Mr. Charles Price. God gave us the down payment. We signed them papers that week. No questions asked. 
them keys to turn over us and we're having our first camp meeting here right now and we come down here to the first payment and we didn't have it and now we got that too <laughs> hallelujah we may not eat tomorrow yeah, we're going to eat we have something we're going to eat tonight if i shut up in time if you didn't have <laughs> some of the things you have look at all the trouble you're having physically in this country and most of it is attributed basically to the way we eat just the way we eat i've been fasting off and on for several weeks and I've lost 20 pounds from 194, I'm down 172. And I'll tell you the truth, it's almost remarkable how you can get by without eating. I feel good. The other day I was doing some exercises, Brother Bad, it's the God's truth. I, just, no. I remember when I was 190 pounds, every time I do that, I'd fall over my head. And I couldn't understand how I could do it now without getting upset, you know. Perfect balance. Just lost a little extra. Amen. Jesus Christ is coming, folks. And there's no doubt about it. I want to give you one more point that I'm going to prove it with. Jesus said, In such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man is coming. Now, all of my life, I was under the impression that that meant it would be in an hour when people are not thinking about His coming. And that's true, too. Because they are not thinking about His coming today. You, you know, the early church used to walk around and greet each other. It wasn't good morning. It wasn't hello. It wasn't how are you. They used to walk up to each other and raise the right hand and say, Maranatha. In other words, Jesus is coming. Be ready. Isn't it wonderful? He might come today. Jesus. They believe so strongly in He's coming. They sold everything they had. I said, you mean to tell me i got to sell everything I have? Well, you better believe in His coming. The Bible says in an hour that you think not. Has there ever been another hour when people have such great knowledge and ability to think? And st we don't think anything through anymore. We jump into marriage without thinking. We buy on credit without thinking. They put a sale on and, on television and they, they say, no money down. They say, woo hoo 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 the way we go. And we never think, hey, does it cost no money down? Don't mean I have to pay for it. All of a sudden, we're confronted with more bills than we can handle. Christians will buy television sets, refrigerators, and cars, and pay 18, 12 to 18 percent interest. You're lucky, honey. You've got to have top-notch credit to get any kind of a loan of money today for 9 percent. You've got to be a first-class risk. You hear me? If you get it at 12 percent, you're good. But a lot of these little furniture companies and these little loan companies, they go 18 percent. And you folk will sign up your life and make all kind of loans and you can't even... And then ask the preacher to, to tell you to pay your tithes, give 10% to God, and you think that's the biggest highway robbery in the world. What, me give 10% of my money to the gospel? To tell you now that this year, 1978, the average American is going to work January, February, March, and April just to pay his taxes. The first four months of this year, your whatever you earn the first four months of this year is what's going to be equal to your taxes for 1978. They still got potholes in the street, bad garbage collection, huh? Can't get people to live together. I said over and over again, Christians, you got to quit living so separate. Here's a sister that told me today this is the first time she's been out in months. You know what you told me? Living by herself, alone. And I, and I could think of, of a bunch of other sisters. And I said to myself, why don't they buy a house or rent a house together and live together? Why don't just four or five of you Holy Ghost saints go get together? What's wrong with that? Praying together. What's wrong with that? The kids come out with that kind of idea and we kick them in the teeth. They want to have community living. Somebody said, oh, they're up to hanky-panky. I remember some time ago, somebody wrote me and, and said, Brother Stare, me and a dear friend of mine, it was male and female, we live together in the same house and everybody's criticizing us. I said, why would they criticize you? Well, they think there's something wrong. I said, look, as long as there ain't nothing going wrong, don't let them fuss at you. There ain't nothing wrong with a man and a woman living together. As long as they ain't, ain't, ain't... Hey, honey, two women could be living together and they can't be straight either. Just because you see two men living together don't mean that... Come on, folk. Righteous men don't need no law. 
People who are righteous, honey, you don't have to watch over them. Righteous folk are going to do right. Amen. Because your mind is bent around and all twisted up. No, I ain't going to do that, Mother Party. I'm going to tell it like it ought to be. You know that. Everybody, you keep getting me. Everybody lift up your hand and say, Lord, help me. Jesus Christ is coming in this generation. This is the last generation. Somebody said, when's it going to end? It's going to end somewhere between 1980 and 2000. I'll get you that close. Maybe as we progress and the Lord gives me a little more insight, I'll get you closer. Somebody said, no man knows the day nor the hour. I get so tired of people quoting that scripture and not quoting it fully. Jesus said, no man knows the day nor the hour, not even the angels. But he did make one more statement. He said, but the Father in heaven, he does know. So he's implying that the Father knows the day and the hour. He's implying that the day and the hour is already set. It's already known. Do you hear that? He, Jesus told us 2,000 years ago that the Father already knew, already knew the day and the hour. And the Bible said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither hath it entered. I'm quoting now. I am quoting the Bible. Do you hear me? Do you have ears enough to hear me? I am quoting, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. Now, we haven't seen that place. Our ears haven't heard of all the splendor that's going to be there. Our hearts are not able to perceive what it's going to be like. Men cannot understand it. Oh, it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life trials will seem so small when we see Him. Oh, I want to see Him face to face. Somebody say amen. Now listen to me close. Listen to me closely. Listen to me. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love Him. Now did you hear that? Now listen. But unto us, but unto us, but unto us has the Spirit revealed it. Come on. Amen. You better get this through your little hearts, honey, that Jesus Christ is not sneaking up on me like a thief in the night. Oh, no, he ain't. Ah, uh, uh, baby. The Bible said the bride has made herself ready. We're going to hear the cry. Behold, the bridegroom's coming. And we're going to fast and be praying and waiting and looking and expecting. And all to them that look for Him shall He appear the second time without sin unto salvation. We are not going to be caught napping. We're not going to be caught planning a vacation to the Caribbean. We're not going to be caught tied up with a business of financial engagement, honey. We're going to have a... Or we're going to lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. And we're going to run with patience a race that's set before us. We're getting those things that are behind and press on for the pride of the high calling in Christ Jesus. If you think, honey, I'm going to have to be sitting somewhere listening for the tiptoeing of Jesus so He don't sneak up on me, you're wrong, honey. Uh, I got my eyes stared up and I'm trying to lift them up more. I have had my eyes too much on the world. I've had my eyes too much on preachers. I've had my eyes too much on stare. 
And the Bible said, look up. Oh, hallelujah. And I'm working every day on it. I'm working every day until old stare is dead. Until I can say with a surety, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Somebody said, Brother Stead, do you hear yourself preaching? Well, I'll tell you the truth tonight. If I ain't doing you no good, I'm sure going to try to do myself some. Maybe you're already there, but I'm not there. I keep asking myself the question, what, what did Paul have that I don't have? What did Paul have spent the last two years of his life in jail? And then when it came time, they tried to kill Paul several times. They couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. His time wasn't ready. And finally the day came, he said, I'm ready now. Hey, said jailer, you can do it today. <laughs> they, they must have got to the place where they'd walk in and everybody say, Paul, you ready today? See, he had a sentence of death on him. He had been sentenced to die two years. But he, he said, I ain't ready, fellas. I ain't ready. And he spent the last two years in jail writing to the church, encouraging Timothy. Come on. Yes, he did. And I can almost see one morning those jailers had, had been so used to walking by. One morning they probably heard Paul banging on the bar. Ding, ding, ding. Hey, fellas. Yeah, Paul, what is it? Hey, I'm ready. Ready for what? I am now ready to be offered. What did that guy have? What in the world did that fella have? To say, come on, fellas, cut my head off. I'm ready now. Chop it off. What did he have? What kind of faith did that man have? What kind of faith did that man have that he said, I am now ready to be offered. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. What did he have? What kind of faith did that man have? Shipwreck, beatings, scourgings, hunger, fastings, pearls, robbery, light on. Yet he cried, none of these things move me. For I am persuaded that neither life nor death, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come shall ever separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. For I know in whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I want to get there, folk. I want to get there. Do you hear me? I want to get there. Where the phraseology is not just words. For me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. What in the world did Peter have? History tells us that they stuck Peter in an inner, inner dungeon. Fifteen feet below the ground in a Rome catacomb where the human stench of human secretion was three to four feet or four inches deep, where people had died in 15 minutes from the poisonous gases that had come up out of that place, where they would put prisoners down there and they would kill them in just a few moments' time. They took Peter and they tied him with his hand and stuck him down in that dungeon. And he lived there like that for nine months. He wouldn't die. And he ended up converting 70-some jailers. The jailers who were waiting for him to die. He wouldn't die. He wouldn't die. He wouldn't die. And finally they brought him up out of there. And they said, all right, since we can't kill you down there, we're going to crucify you. He said, fine by me, but don't you dare hang me with my head up. You hang me with my head down. 
And church history tells us that they refused. They said, we'll hang you on the cross any way we want to. You're the prisoner and we're the executioner. And the history tells us he taught at them. He taught at them. He said, what's the matter, you chicken? What's the matter, you afraid to do it? He taught at them until he made them angry enough to hang him on a cross with his head down because he did not consider himself worthy to be crucified like his Lord. What kind of Christianity did they have? What in the world did Peter have or Stephen have? What did he have? What kind of grace did he experience that he could stand there in the presence of his executioners with blood dripping from his brow and bones being broken and crushed and stand there with his face shining like the face of an angel and cry out, Father, lay not this sin to their charge. What kind of grace did he receive? You believe me today, there is a grace that you can have that's sufficient for living and sufficient for dying. There is a grace that you can receive tonight that is sufficient to bless you and sufficient to keep you when you're not blessed. Hallelujah. I wish somebody praise his name with me tonight. I wish somebody raise your hand and say, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Where's my piano player? Glory. Come on, Brother Jane. Move fast. Lift your hand and say, yes, Lord. Raise both hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Come on, lift up your hand and say, God, keep me. Can you go to the piano, Brother James? Yeah, go to the piano. I want to sing this song. God bless Brother James. Praise the Lord. Will you sing with me, Sister Teresa? Will you come and sing with me tonight? Take the other microphone over there, please. Come on, Brother James. Come on, son. Move them big legs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Raise your hand and say, I love you, Jesus. Come on, say, God, I want to be ready. God, I want to be, be in that number. I want to be in that number. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Mm, he is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. In Jesus, 
I learned to trust in God through it all, through it all. I learned to depend upon His Word. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Everybody bow your heads, please, and close your eyes. I'm going to, as much as I need to hurry along here tonight. I need to take time to do a few things, and I wish you'd stay with me. I wish you wouldn't leave. I wish you'd give me just a little more time. It's cost me a lot of money to be here. So please give me the time. You're here tonight, and you're not sure. You're not, you're not there. You're not in the place that you want to be. And you don't want to have to make God to make you bow your knees. But there's one thing I don't want God to have to make me do. I don't want to have Him to have to make me bow. Make me humble myself. I want to do it. I want to bow. I want to call Him my Lord. If you're not sure of that tonight, if you haven't bowed, if you haven't bowed your heart and bowed your head and bowed your knee, and you want to do it tonight, you want to do it publicly, we're going to sing it again. I want you out of your seat and down here right on the front and kneeling right there around that railing. Just bow your knee and give a new commitment to God. Give a new commitment to God saying, God, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to search for you. I'm going to find you. I'm going to confess my sins. And with your help, I'm going to forsake them. And I'm going through. If you're not right with God tonight, won't you come for just a moment, just a moment, bow your knee here at this front of this auditorium. Right here in the John Hancock Hall, an old-fashioned prayer service, just for a moment. While we sing it, won't you come, everybody, all that's not in a position where you want to be with God, or you feel like the Spirit is saying, make the move, I believe you ought to do it. Don't put it off. Just for a moment, will you come? He is Lord. Sing it, dear. Come on, won't you come, young man, young woman, husband, wife, son or daughter, won't you come and just bow your knee and confess He's Lord? For with the heart man believeth, and with the mouth confession is made. If you believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ, and confess with your mouth that God has raised him from the dead, you should be saved. Will you come? If there's somebody who wants to bow your knee before him tonight, if there's somebody who wants to bow before him tonight, will you come quickly? That's right, just bow right there. Just bow your knee before God. Hallelujah. Would you like to do it, sir? Would you like to do it, Mother? Just for a moment, won't you do it? Sing it again, sing it again. Won't you come? Confess He's the Lord. He's my Lord. Will you come, sir? Young man, young woman? A new commitment? I want to bow, Lord. I want to bow, Jesus. I want to bow before you. He has risen from the dead. He Oh, yes, Lord. By God, I bow my knee before you. The Apostle Paul, I cry out, I bow my knee before the great God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Oh, Spirit of God. Spirit of God, breathe upon our lives tonight as we rededicate, reconsecrate, recommit, confess, repent, whatever it takes, Lord, in our lives to make us what you want us to be. Mold us, make us, fill us, and use us. Oh, halibut, sila, la baham, da kola bahosaya. Mila baham, di kola bahosa, taka bahaya. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pray, saints. Pray just for a moment. Pour out your heart to God. Pour out your soul to the Lord. Pour out your life to Him tonight. Confess your sins. Tell God you're sorry for your backsliding. Come it to you, Jesus. Wash me in the blood. Restore the joy of your salvation. Oh, God, have mercy on me right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Just as I Wash it for me. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your heads, folk. Lift them up high. Lift them up high. Come on, lift up your hands and say, Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You may return to your seats if you can. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is what doing. I love you tonight. I love you. Christians, may I say this much to you? That I know a lot of times you Christians go to church and you're looking for the preacher to encourage you. And I don't know of any other way I could have encouraged you anymore tonight. Somebody said, Brother Stair, why don't you pray for me? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? You're healed. The presence of the Lord is here and His presence is healing. You're healed. You're already healed. You're saved. Believe it. The Bible said, Brother Stair, that's ridiculous. Jesus said, by grace are you saved. Believe it. And then go live it. Learn righteousness and pursue it. Shun evil. Do it. God bless you, Mary. Pour out your heart to him, hon. For the Lord thy God has spoken now by the voice of my spirit. Yea, for I have said with people of another tongue and stammering lips would I speak to my people. And I say unto you that thou should watch and pray always. That thou might be accounted worthy to escape all those things that are coming upon the face of the earth. Yea, my children, this is the time that you should draw nigh to me that I might draw nigh unto thee, that I might cleanse your hands and purify your hearts, your double-minded, that thou might have a singleness of mind and a singleness of purpose to search out my will, my will, my will for your life, that I might give you that abundant life and that you might be able to stand in these last and evil days. Yea, my children, find fellowship, come together, be one. Yea, I say unto you, be united in faith and spirit and purpose. Yea, I say unto you, my people, this night, be not envious of each other, be not grievous, but be doers of righteousness and perfect the holiness in the fear of the Lord and follow peace with all men. For this is the day of the Lord. This is the day of the Lord. And the day of wrath and the day of judgment is soon to come. And I want to spare thee from that. So be ye ready. Be ye ready. Be ye ready. Saith the Lord. Oh, help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me. Oh, God. What else can I say, Lord? What else can I do to these people tonight? That's not by might, not by power. Oh, Jesus. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. Pray God. By his stripes you're healed. You are healed tonight. You are saved tonight. You are an overcomer. Thanks beyond to God who always causes us to triumph 
in our Lord Jesus Christ. If you're, if you're sick, if you feel a pain in your body, touch your body now and say, I command the Spirit to go from my body. Do it. Do it. Come on, do it. Tell somebody sitting next to you, say, touch me in Jesus' name. Come on, do it. My God, reach out. Pray one for another. If you're having, having troubles in your home, say somebody, say, say, somebody, say to the Spirit, leave me alone. Go from me. Get behind me, Satan. Loose me now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Oh, praise God. Reach out and touch someone. Touch yourself. Be loose from your infirmity. Be made a whole by the power of God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, dear Lord. I bless your people, God. I stretch out my hand and bless this congregation. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. How many of you people would like to have me come back here sometime again to John Hancock Hall? Would you like me to do that again? Would you like me to do that again? You know, I... I was hoping that we could get it full. I've been on television all week out there in Channel 27 and with my spots and I uh, spent quite a few hundred dollars there. And I, you, you know, it's really amazing how people... You know, this building usually rents for almost $700 for a Sunday. And these people were, didn't make me put up no deposit. They've known me. They know me when I was here 10 years ago with David Epley. They know me. And when I... They've been trying to get me to come back here for years and I wouldn't come because that took a lot of faith to rent a building for $600 a day. How many people know that takes some faith to do that? And I, I, I didn't know. I, I came here to cancel. I had, I had booked the 6th of this month and I was going through a very serious personal trial and I came here to cancel it. I came here to cancel the meeting and when I came here, they said, we got a Sunday that just came open for you if you want a Sunday. And I said, all right, I'll take it. And then they, they lowered the price for me. They lowered it. Isn't that wonderful? And then they said, now, you don't have to give us no money. Just wait until the meeting's over and give it to us after the meeting. If I'd had to pay them beforehand, I couldn't have been here. I didn't have it. And I don't have all the money I need tonight just to pay for this meeting. I don't have the money. I have to go back. My church was up here from New York, and so therefore there was no service down there. So the money that would come in down there is not there. We usually take two, three hundred dollars down in the church. Now, that's not going to be there. So when I, my church here in Cambridge, we didn't have service this morning, and most of the people came over and put their tithe in over here, so I would have got that if I wouldn't have been here anyhow. But you see, now it takes all of that to pay all of these bills, and when this meeting's all over, unless God gives me a, a little extra miracle, I'm not going to have no money to, go, to, to hardly get back to New York with. Now, I'm not saying that to be smart, because I've done that before, but I think it's time that Boston starts treating me a little better. I've been one of the most faithful... Pre- I have come to this city almost once a month, believe it or not, for over eight years. Somebody said, I didn't know. Honey, I tried to let you know. I've been on WRYT every time I come. I've been on WRYT for eight years. Every Saturday morning I'm on there. Now I'm on Sunday afternoons. Amen. The last time I was at the New England Life Hall, I spent over $2,000 advertising all on credit. I spent $3,000 to be at the New England Life Hall and my offering was $500. It took me several months just to pay those bills, to get it back on. Somebody said, well, they were already paid. Sure, people paid them, but you see, that was money that I would have used for other things. Do you understand what I'm saying? It was my church folk gave me the money to pay the bills, but you see, those folk would give me the money and I could do other things when I took the money to pay. Now, I'm saying to you tonight, I have proven faithful to this city. I have preached in this city sometimes to four and five people. I have preached in this city sometimes to, to, to two or three hundred people. I have preached when it cost me to preach, and I have preached when they blessed me to preach. No time have I misused money. I filed my income tax the other day. My personal income was $4,400 for last year. Somebody said, I don't believe that. Well, honey, you don't have to if you don't want to. I took in close to $50,000 last year and personally, out of my church in Crusades, four churches, Crusades all over the country, combined, they gave me $4,400. That's what I got. That's what I got. Somebody said, how do you live? Well, I'll tell you, I don't live like you. That I can tell you. I don't live in a fancy home. I don't, live in no, don't drive no fancy car. If I, had, if I lived like that, I couldn't have made it, could I? Could I? Could I? Somebody said, you got on a nice suit. I sure have. A sister bought this for me about a year ago, two years ago. And I'm sorry I ever bought it. The only time I ever wear it is something like this because I don't even feel comfortable in it. 
I might look all right, but I don't feel comfortable. It's awful hard for me to take $100 and buy a suit when I could pay for a radio broadcast. How many understand that? See, that's the way I am. Now, maybe that's wrong, but I, it's just difficult for me to do that. Some folk can go out and buy all kinds of stuff. I can't do that. We went over to buy a, a flash attachment for our camera the other day at, at Leachmere. And, and I, wanted to, I was trying to find a way not to buy it. As badly as I need a camera to take some pictures, you know, to help with my ministry. I was trying, and I said, well, we'll, we'll, we'll give them a check. Now, we ain't never, I've never been to Leachmere. They don't know me from Adam. And we had Georgia driver's license and a Boston check. And they took it. I was hoping they wouldn't because I really didn't want I wanted to buy it, yet I didn't want to buy it. How many folks understand what I'm saying? And so I said, all right, if God wants me to have it, then they'll take the check. They took the check with one Georgia driver's license for identification. Now, if you don't think that's a miracle, try it. Go ahead. Go to Leachman and try it. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. They want a Massachusetts driver's license and some other kind of identification, too. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Try it. Yet they cast a Boston check on Suffolk Franklin with a Georgia's driver's license for somebody who never bought anything in their store before. Now, that's the way I am. Now, I need some help tonight. I need some of you people to help me. It's just as simple as that. The offering this afternoon came to approximately $700. That's a miracle. We, don't, just, we, don't, we didn't have any more than we have here now. Honey, when you get $700 out of less than 70 people, you're going somewhere. Come on, folks. And I did not call a $20 line. I did not. I just took the offering. I believe tonight that this, this, this six or seven of you people, you've been blessed with good jobs and good money. You could give $100 tonight. You could do it. We got a chance to buy a building in New York. Uh, no fancy church building. I don't believe in fancy church buildings. I don't believe in it. I will not take money and build some big old church that the only time I use it is on a Sunday morning. We live in our churches. In our church in New York, Brother Jones, where you at, Brother Jones? Come here, Brother Jones. Brother Jones back there lives. His wife died, left him with three children. Brother Jones would have no place to live. He lives in our church with us. He lives with us, and we, we fuss with each other and squabble with each other, but we love each other. That's right. I'll punch him in the nose if he gets in my way. He's had me so mad at him sometimes I want to take him in the street. He'd be in the street. He'd be out in the street with three children. And he finally owns up to that. He don't, he's not too humble to say that, and he cleans up after the dog, scrubs out the toilets if I tell him, and makes him clean up the floor, burns pots in the kitchen. Boils water so it cooks. Man. I love you, Brother Jones. Sister Williams down here, she lives in the church. I live in the church. Sister Williams pays to live in our church. She pays rent to help us with the bills of the church. And then she gives $100 every month as an offering. And God took that woman, you heard her testimony tonight, took her from, a, from almost a pauper on welfare and struggling to today she has over $8,000 in the bank and don't owe anybody any money. Not one single dime. Not one dime does she owe anybody. Fantastic. She's black. She's ignorant. Yeah, she ain't no smart woman. Not the way the world calls people smart. No, she ain't. She's a maid. She cleans white folks' toilets. And then white folk are willing to pay her all kind of money to keep cleaning their toilets because they like the way she cleans their toilets. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. You'd be surprised what they do for that woman. When she talks even about quitting, they get, they get hysterical. They don't want her to quit. She prays for them. She talks to them about Jesus. They actually pay her. Some of the people pay her just to sleep in their house. Yeah, she's been paid three, four, five hundred dollars sometimes just to sleep in somebody's house while they take a trip around the world. And God said, I'll bless you. She lives in the church. I live in the church. That's the way we do it. We're buying a building, the Lord being our helper, because it's cheaper for us. We're paying over $700 now a month for the building we have in New York. We can buy the building. It'll, it'll, be, less than, it'll be less than $400. And we'll have, a, we'll have a place for a youth center. We'll have a place for our office. We'll have a place for our church. We'll have a place to live. We'll have a place for you when you come to New York. You say, I need a place to sleep. We'll have a place for you to sleep. 
You'll have to maybe eat our sardines, because that may be all we'll have. But, honey, they'll be good sardines, I promise you, because we'll sanctify you. I'll tell you, these black folk, when they start cooking in the kitchen, honey, they can take black-eyed peas and make them sound... St- yeah, they- I've seen Sister Williams take $15 worth of groceries and feed everybody in our church on Sunday. You see, in our church, in both of our churches, in one here and one, you don't believe me, come to our church here next Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, and they'll feed you. Free. No charge. They'll feed you. You hear what I said? Yeah, then you come in there, and, and they will get upset with you if you won't eat. And they will feed you. We, don't, we, we have chicken dinner, but we don't sell them. Poor chicken died, that's enough, honey. Don't need a charge for it. In New York, same way, we feed the people. We've done it for years. And we never tell anybody to bring any food. Amen. In fact, if you wanted to, you could have hung around here between services and got some chicken right back here. Had some dead chicken back here, honey, but it was really fixed up good. Somebody said, I don't know how you do it. A few Sundays ago, we had 27, 28 people on Sunday morning. Yeah. Brother Jones, Brother A. 27 people, grown-ups, not counting the kids, and the offering was $700. So we, take, we teach tithe paying. We pay tithe. Sister Maggie there came to our church, got saved, and God blessed her under Timmy and Savior. She started paying her tithe. The only time she can come to church is the first Sunday of the month. She has to work the rest of the Sunday. She comes the first Sunday of the month. She pays her tithe. I've seen her come into church and, and, and give $100. She said, well, Brother Sarah, I've been giving God my tithe, which is 10 so this week I'm going to give God the, the, the 100 and I'm going to keep the 10 Maggie gives her tithe and gives her offering and does it over and over again. And today she's got money in the bank, got her bills paid. Come on, folks, and do them better than she ever done. You can't beat God. You can't beat God. I wish somebody helped me tonight. I wish you'd see my sincerity. We bought a motel in South Carolina. We're going to be planting some gra- some food there. We're going to have a garden there. We're going to buy more land. We're going to grow food. Somebody said, Brother Stair, why are you going to do that? Because, honey, you ain't going to keep on buying in these, in these food markets and get by. They're going to raise the cost of living so high that you just ain't going to do it no more. I have told people over and over again, people still don't understand why Mr. Nixon went to China. And Mr. you see Mr. Nixon ain't out of the picture yet, is he? You see him starting to surface again? You see him? Do you see him, honey? In New York the other day, honey, he stopped all traffic. He's right back out there just as flamboyant as he ever was. Oh, you think he's dead? He ain't dead, honey. Uh-uh. Mr. Nixon and Mr. Rockefeller and them big rich boys are still pulling strings behind the scenes. The wealth of this world is controlled by approximately 100 men. And they're controlling this whole wealthy worldly system. And they make it. Mr. Nixon went to China. Folks still don't understand why he went to China. Still don't understand. You see, we want to know how do those Chinese control 800 million people? How in the world do you keep 800 million people from rioting in the street? How do you keep them from having juvenile delinquency and crime? There's no crime in China. There's no juvenile delinquency in China. Uh-uh, honey. So how do they do it? Two ways they do it. And ever since Nixon made that trip, we have had the same two procedures working against us here. Keep people poor and restrict their travel. Somebody said, they ain't doing that in this country. Now, you see, Nixon, all these politicians are smart enough. They know they can't come over here and tell you that, that, that you've got to be poor. So what do they do? They make it possible for you to make a lot of money, but they make the money worth nothing. You're still poor, aren't you? Still poor, aren't you? Huh? Oh, yeah, you go home with two, $300 paycheck, but, honey, you can't do with 300 bucks what Grandma did with 30 Somebody said, well, how do they restrict your travel? They're making it so impossible to travel anymore, honey. I used to travel back and forth to Georgia. It used to take me $25 to do it. I get in my truck now, it costs me $65, $75, $80. It's getting higher and higher and higher to travel. Insurance is costing more. So you see, after a while, you ain't going to be able to travel. Think it's going to fix it so you can't. You see, they know that they can't come over here and tell the American people, you know what happened here in Boston when the, when the snow thing come and the governor said you can't park your car and you can't drive it. Hey, boy, he was in trouble, wasn't he? How are you going to do something like that? You can't tell the American people you can't drive your cars. Don't tell them that. And they know it. So all they're going to do is make it so expensive you can't drive it. They're going to restrict our travel. They're going to confine us to where they want us. Because they can't control us any other way. They're going to make us poor so we can't protest. And even today, if you wanted to protest anything, where would you go? 
You want to protest high electric bills? How are you going to do it? They'll cut your lights off. 